Hello everyone, welcome to another Blender tutorial. This is Brennan here, and today I'm showing you how to make the light shimmering effect, which I uploaded a while ago. Really sorry for not uploading that anytime soon. But um, a few people requested that tutorial. Let me see who requested it. Uh, a few people just, they kind of um, just like said they wanted it basically is what I'm saying. Like they voted for it. Um, Matthias, Matthias Kind or Kind, he said, yes, please make a tutorial. So I'm going to make this tutorial because he said that. And I also noticed another person said um, in the comments on that video, on the animation of this light shimmering effect, they said, please do a tutorial on this. Um, so yeah, I'm doing a tutorial now. Uh, thank you for requesting. And um, the other person requested was the minty man you can see his comment on the actual cool light effect in blender internal animation video that i have i'll probably put that in the description for you to see if you want to or uh, in the same video um so yeah let's go ahead and get into it let's i'll show you how how i did this and then i'll show you the compositing we'll, we'll get into the compositing even the compositing because usually on the tutorials we don't always get into compositing but this time i'm going to go into the compositing for you guys Okay, um, so first of all, we have the render layer node that's always needed, of course. Uh, we have the composite viewer node, defocus, the lens distortion, glare. Starts off by connecting from the render layers to the glare. Just a simple star set to high. Uh, iterations three, basic settings. Uh, of course, the threshold's 0.6. And then it goes to lens distortion. From lens distortion goes to defocus because this is in the Blender internal. If you haven't noticed already, you probably have. Um, so the defo it goes from the defocus to a composite and a viewer node. And this is what the result is. This is what it looks like when you the final render, as you saw in the video, looks just like that. Which looks pretty nice. It adds a the, all of this together add, makes a nice effect. I just like the lens distortion. It adds a nice extra. Uh, effect to it. Um, so let's go ahead and see what it looks like in Blender when it's rendered. And the reason why it looks like this is because I turned on on this halo. I turned on um, show halo or show cone. There it is right here on this setting right there. So then and this is what it actually looks like in Blender. It's just a cube like that being demolished or exploding but not really exploding. It's just it's kind of like an because I'm using an explode modifier. Um, it just makes the pieces fall off, basically. And then I did a reverse build modifier, um, which just uh, makes it so that it reverses instead of building, it removes the pieces. So it kind of adds extra, an extra effect maybe. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I had a particle system added. I didn't really do anything with the particle system. Didn't really need to. I don't believe. Okay, I turned down the gravity so that it wouldn't, so it would be slower. And that really creates the, the shimmering effect that I made. Um, also, if you noticed, I put two different, let me make this bigger for you. I put two different lamps, and these are both hit. Uh, we go to default setup. These are both just spot lamps. So these spot lamps, they have, they create a halo, and that halo goes through these holes right here, and it creates this effect right here. That's how it happens, which is really nice. You can create a good um, effect for a logo because it just goes, and then it fades to kind of a nice-looking background. And you could have your logo right there if you like. Which would be really nice. So just a really cool effect that I figured out a while ago and I wanted to share with everyone. And yeah, so let's get into actually making this thing. So let's go ahead and click on New. Reload Startup File. And there we go. We reloaded the startup file. Let me make sure before I do anything at all, I need to turn on Start Display. And you can see the screencast keys. Um... Okay, so let's first of all, let's just keep this cube. 
And I think we'll just keep his lamp as well. Let's put it behind the cube. And let's go to the lamp settings or light settings up in uh, the options, the properties window. Let's select spot. And we need to set this to like, see how it's slanted like that? We need to set it like so that it's not slanted. So let's press Alt R on the keyboard. And that just resets the rotation so that it doesn't have that default rotation um, or that rotation that it. Yeah, it's basically a default rotation. Um, so now let's select, select show cone so we can see where the light is actually going to be shining. Let's rotate this 90 degrees on the keyboard by pressing R and then typing in 90. And actually we could have... Let's just rotate 180 degrees from there after we rotated it 90. Just so that it's straight, facing straight towards this cube. And let's place the camera just like in the other file I showed you. Let's go into front view. Let's press Control alt 0 on the keyboard. And there we go. Now it's pretty much facing straight on. Let's make sure that it's straight on though by pressing 5 and then pressing Control alt 0 And we can just move this over just a bit because it's not perfectly centered. We press G just to grab it and move it around. Let's move it right about there. Okay, so let's Let's mess with these settings. Let's change these settings on this spot lamp. Let's change the size. Mm, yeah, let's just leave it at 0.1. Uh, let's see, change this size actually, the spot shape. Change it to about that big maybe. And let's move it over just a bit like that. A few blender units, a few, in few small increments. And then let's duplicate this by pressing Shift D. Let's move it over. And you can change these to any colors you'd like. I'm going to change this to a purplish, dark bluish purplish kind of color. And then I'm going to make this one hmm, maybe a lighter blue type color just to see how that looks. Might look okay. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's go ahead and go start making this cube. Um, animate and do everything it needs to do to create that effect. And now one thing that I didn't mention earlier was that I rotated the cube so the cube's actually animated for a certain point. Like during the time that it's creating that effect, it's rotating. So it, it makes the shimmering type of effect. Like actually move. Um, so let's first of all add a particle system to this cube. Select your cube and then add a particle system. We'll do the other rotation and everything later. But for now, let's just add a particle system. And then let's add in a, an explode modifier. Where is that? Explode. Don't see it anywhere. There it is. Okay, now if you press Alt A on the keyboard, you see that it animates and it explodes, but it's not exploding like you want it to. This big chunk's exploding. So all you have to do is just press subdivide on the keyboard a few times. And now more pieces will come off, just like that. Okay, so let's change, let's make it cut edges. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, it creates a different type of effect, but let's subdivide it again. And then let's choose random. And I think I also went into the rotation, maybe, just to make it because if I rotate this, it rotates a little bit, yeah. So we don't need to do anything else with this besides the gravity. We need to change the gravity to about something like 0.1. And then it'll just kind of drop, just kind of float. Uh, maybe not 0.1 after all. Let's turn it back up a bit. That's probably good. Um, let's go and add it in a build modifier. But let's reverse the build. Let's go. Let's put this at the very top, and then reverse the build so that it's taking it apart instead of building it. And then let's select randomize. And let's see. Let's go to about because it normally will go to about a hundred. Let's go about a hundred and one. Yeah, so about a hundred and one. So it'll start like this. 
and then what we need to do is rotate it. So let's set a keyframe, location rotation, and then go to 101, let's put 101, and then rotate it, press R, R on the keyboard, and then just rotate, rotate it in different directions, um, and then press I, location rotation. And now it'll just rotate all over, just like that. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we're not seeing any light. And that is because I have not even switched the Blender render. And now you should be able to see if everything's working. Looks like we're seeing some heavy particles there. Um, so what we need to do is go into the particle setting. We have to turn off this right here. Um, we can also just, yeah, because it was on Halo, we need to turn that off, and then we can just, if we need to see that, we could turn on point, but we don't need to. We can just turn that off, or just select rendered, so it'll show as rendered. There we go, so now everything's set up. Now all we need to do is set up these lamps so they're correctly working. Um, let's see. We just select Halo, I forgot about that, sorry. We needed to turn on Halo, but I didn't do that. So now it will create that Halo effect that we were looking for in the first place. And the reason why you're not seeing much. Okay, so with these Halos, we need to make them even closer. Or with these um, not Halos, with these lamps. And we need to make sure we have um, buffer shadow turned on. Let's turn on buffer shadow, so select buffer shadow in each of these. And then let's just change, let's see, let's change the intensity to, let's just leave the intensity like that and then we need to turn up the steps, that's what it was. I need to turn up the steps, because then it creates that type of effect, right there. And there we go. Now we have that light shimmering type of effect which looks really great. You can create a really cool intro. It just fades away and goes right to blank, just like that. There you go. So thank you guys for watching. I'm so glad that you requested this tutorial and that I was able to make it. Um, and I'll definitely continue making tutorials. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for subscribing, for liking, commenting, and rating, and everything. Or rating is the same thing as liking, I think. But, yeah. Anyway. So, I will see you guys on next Tutorial Tuesday. I now have 610 subscribers, thanks to you all. Keep on sharing, liking, commenting, and everything. See you next Tutorial Tuesday.